Hello everyone and welcome to Economics Media. Today we are here to have a discussion on the topic of co-integration. That is a topic of multivariate time series and it's a sub part of it that is co-integration. So in this uh, session we are mainly going to focus on the definition of co-integration, what it is, how it is uh, formed and what are the reasons behind its uh, cause and also the main focus will be on the testing of co-integration. So let's begin. As I have just told you, it's a part of time series model. So let us have a model as beta 1, beta 2, x2 t plus epsilon t. Let this be equation number 1. I can rewrite equation number 1 as this yt xt that means here the error term is a function of the dependent variable as well as the independent variable let us mark it as equation number two here from equation number two we can say that if the error uh, dependent and the independent variables are non-stationary that means if they contain unit root or integrated of some order then the epsilon t will no longer be stationary. That is, I am saying the condition of epsilon t to be stationary or non-stationary depends completely on the nature of the dependent as well as the independent variables. So, if the dependent and the independent variables both are stationary, then epsilon t is stationary. No issue with that. But if epsilon t, uh, if the dependent and the independent variables are non-stationary, that means if they contain unit root, then the stationarity of epsilon t is not being confirmed. We are not very much sure about it. Okay. So, from here, we will be coming to the uh, definition of co-integration. So co-integration says that for the given betas, that means the, for the given co the coefficients of the model, if this depend independent variable is integrated of some order, then by taking a linear relationship between them, if the relationship is linear existing, then we can say that the variables are co-integrated to each other. Okay? So, if the relationship, if this equation 2, here, if this is stationary, then we can say, that means the, if the error term here is stationary, then we can say that the variables are co-integrated to each other. Or we can say if yt and xt are non-stationary with this, if epsilon t is stationary, then we can say that yt and xt are co-integrated. CI stands short form for the uh, co-integration. Okay. So this is the basic definition of co-integration. And this concept of co-integration was first being proposed by Granger in the year 1981. With him, Engel was also a person who was there in this uh, co-integration concept and both of them has presented a theorem that is known as the Engel-Granger representation theorem. Let me just highlight the points of this theorem. Engel-Granger representation so I'm just pointing out the highlights, okay? For the existence of co-integration, they provided a necessary condition. So what is the necessary condition? They said that 
xt and yt needs uh, need to be non stationary of same order that means the number of unit root they are containing needs to be equal to each other that is if xt is integrated of order 1 then yt will also be integrated of order 1 this is the necessary condition that Engelbrandt have provided and number 2 they have said that the error correction model is equal to the co-integration this is again a very important proof okay so this is the theorem representation theorem now moving on towards the testing of co-integration which is our main focus of this session so this testing of co-integration was also provided with uh, provided by granger and it is known as Granger two-step methodology. Okay, so two-step it means that there has to be uh, there is basically two steps in order to test for the presence of co-integration. Before the presence of co-integration, we need to test the presence of unit root into our model. So, if our model is yt equal to beta 1, beta 2, x2, t plus of epsilon t, then we need to, this is not the two-step methodology of Granger. I am just saying that before two-step methodology, what is the thing that you need to follow? So, step number one says that uh, test for unit root in x2t, yt and all the other variables and find that whether the order of integration between the variables are same or is it different because if they are same then there is no issue because with the presence of same number of unit root it always directs us to the presence of co-integration between the two variables but if they are uh, integrated of different order then there is no need to uh, do the co-integration test because the necessary condition for co-integration is the presence of equal number of unit roots okay if suppose the variables contain equal number of unit roots then we need to proceed to the co-integration test here the two-step methodology starts so this starts from here Step 1 says that we have a model and we need to estimate the model. That is yt equal to beta 1, beta 2, x 2 t, epsilon t. We need to estimate this model by applying OLS. And we need to obtain the estimates of all the parameters as well as the uh, expected value of the dependent variable so apply OLS to estimate what are the things beta 1 hat beta 2 hat then yt hat x2 t hat okay after this uh, step of the two step methodology we need to obtain epsilon t hat what is epsilon t hat? It is the deviation between the original and the expected value. So, first step is that the given model needs to be estimated by applying OLS and then we need to find the estimates of the coefficients as well as the variables. Then from there we need to obtain the uh, epsilon t hat which is nothing but the deviation from or the gap between the actual and the expected value. After this, we move to the second step of the angle grandeur. So this is step one. 
Now coming to step 2 is that we have epsilon t hat equal to yt and yt hat, right? Now go to theory once more. Co-integration definition says that the epsilon t needs to be stationary with the variables being non-stationary, right? So here we need to test the stationarity of this epsilon t, that is the error term. Whether that is stationary or not, that will determine that whether the variables are co-integrated or not. So here, after step 1, we need to perform the unit root test for epsilon t hat. And here, if we are writing epsilon t hat, then we have a model in this format. And here, the um, hypothesis will be rho equal to 0 and rho less than 0. This implies presence of unit root. And here it says no unit root. Okay. So simply, unit root test, I'm saying uh, you can apply many other tests. Are there Dickey Fuller test, Dickey Pantola test, KPSS tests? So Dickey Fuller test, you just apply the test and find out whether your this error term is stationary or not. If we fail to reject the null hypothesis, then that implies that the error term contains unit root and the variables are co-integrated. Similarly, if we reject the null hypothesis, this implies that there is no unit root and epsilon t is stationary. And with the stationarity of epsilon t, we can conclude that the variables are co-integrated to each other. So just write the final comments. Reject H0, this implies the variables are co-integrated. Variables are co-integrated. And fail to reject null hypothesis, this implies the variables are not co-integrated. Okay? So this is the way and this is the testing for the presence of co-integration through the uh, Granger two-step methodology. I hope you have understood the video, uh, the concept of this video that we have just discussed. And if you have some kind of problems related to co-integration or any other subparts of uh, Ecotrix, please let us know below in the comment section. And for more updates, please stay tuned to Economicspedia. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next one.